Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. We are here inside the Union Trust Building downtown. I don't know if you've ever been inside here, but it is a pretty spectacular building, and it's got a wild history. Charles here, who's the site supervisor of security, has been here for over 20 years. And Charles, you're going to tell us where we are right now, basically. So good morning. Uh, we're in the main lobby here of the Union Trust Building. Back in 1914, Henry Clay Frick had paid the Catholic Diocese for the land that the church sat on. He uh, was not Catholic, so he tore the church down, uh, then put what we were known as the Union Arcade Building on top of it. We held 240 retail shops um, up until 1923. Uh, after his passing in 1919, his estate sold to the Union Trust Company, uh, which was a bank here in Pittsburgh. And then Mellon took a master lease out on the building, and they, they occupied a majority of the building. Uh, they vacated the building when they built the Mellon Client Service Center. Um, and then Jeanette will give you the uh, future uh, of the Union Trust Building, uh, where Jonathan Davis came in and purchased us. And okay, so Jeanette, what's your position here? I'm the Assistant Property Manager. And you're going to tell us a little bit about, I guess, what's been happening over the past few decades in this building. Yes, so in 2014, the Davis Companies bought this building. They paid $14 million cash for it. And they have since then put over $100 million into the renovation. Mr. Davis, John Davis, um, lived, grew up in Pittsburgh in Squirrel Hill, and this was his mother's favorite building. So when it came up for sheriff's sale in 2014, he scooped it up for a mere $14 million cash. When you say sheriff sale, does that mean it was like going bankrupt? Yes, yes, the previous owners had defaulted on their mortgage and, it, and the bank owned it, so it was up for, up for uh, new ownership. And what was, like, did the building look like this in 2014? Oh, no, not at all, not at all. There were a lot of repairs that needed to be done, everything from elevator mechanics to uh, repairs on all the finishes, interior and exterior, fixing a lot of other people's past repairs that were done poorly. Um, and then all of the prettiest stuff, like the different colored carpets and all of the artwork, um, a lot of the uh, molding and stuff needed to be repaired and just bringing it back to its elegance. Yeah, like, do you know how many pieces of glass are in that ceiling? It looks crazy. I don't know that answer, but somebody asked me that a couple weeks ago. That would be a very interesting uh, piece of trivia. I do well, know. it's gorgeous. Yes, it is. So the stained glass is original. It was done by a company called Rudy Brothers. They were here in Pittsburgh. This was the largest installation in Pittsburgh. They've done other smaller ones in the area, but this was their largest installation. They've since gone out of business, but it is original. Wow. And you say there's an auditorium also? Yes, there is. We have a 300-seat theater. Oh, my gosh. Is that just over there? That is right over here. Well, let's check it out. Let's. What kind of things are happening in this theater? Like, I... I feel like I had no idea that there's a bonus theater in downtown Pittsburgh. Well, it is a little unusual feature to have in an office building in the middle of the city. But right now we rent this theater out to outside groups for any kind of event that they would like to have, whether it be a networking event, uh, a TED Talk. Um, karaoke night, talent karaoke show with your friends. I, I, yeah, you're onto something there, shareholder meeting. It's also a tenant amenity, so any of our tenants can use this space for free when they need to. Is there a balcony up there too? Yes, there is. Gosh, this is what, like a, an incredible little hidden gem. This is so cool because it really, I mean, it looks like a mini Benedum or something. So the story behind the theater is Henry Clay Frick was a lover of the arts. He built the building, but he was not a very popular man out in public. So he had the arts come here, whether it be the opera or the ballet, they would come here and perform for Henry Clay Frick. So oh this my was God. a private theater. That's amazing. And all the little chandeliers up top also. It's beautiful. It's quite beautiful. We've outfitted it with all um, new and modern technology. So it's available for, you know, virtual or in-person events. It has everything you need. Very cool. Is there like a backstage area? It's sort of like hidden Not behind really. a wall. It's just yeah. a hall. It's just a hallway back there. We don't have a green room. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Gosh, well, if you, you need a space for an event, I would say book it up here. This is pretty cool. Yeah, it is very cool. Very cool. And you're right. It is a hidden gem. Very unexpected. Yeah. And you're going to take us around the corner now to get a peek at, at, the, at the roof, which is sort of one of the most iconic bits of the Union Trust building, probably. Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. It's just like, I feel like every turn in this building, there are just new surprises. This, like, beautiful atrium with a stairway. This is nuts. This is a great space. So if you look up there, you'll see that structure on top of the building. 
that houses floors 12 through 15, and that's what's called the chapels. So when Henry Clay Frick bought this property, St. Paul's Roman Cathedral was, was here. They demolished the church and moved it to Oakland. Part of the requirements of the Catholic diocese was that he sort of paid homage to the Catholic religion. And this is what he did. He constructed chapels. There's two of those on top of the building. But there's really no religious significance to those yeah. structures. No church services have ever been held there. But that was his way of sort of getting around that requirement. Wow. And are there offices in there? No, just elevator mechanics and lots of dust. <laughs> Now we're up on the roof with Chris Lasky. So you're explaining that when this first opened, this was a, a promenade up here. Yeah, so what you could do, the public was able to come up. It was a red clay tile. And if you can imagine, there wasn't too much to look at. There was the courthouse, there was the Frick building, there was the William Penn, but everything else was open, filled with a lot of smoke, I would imagine, from the, from the mills. We looked to see if there was a way that we could continue that, either by having some retail function up here, restaurant or something, but we weren't able to have that, uh, have that done here for a number of reasons. But it's still beautiful, uh, and you can really get a feel as for, uh, as for what this looked like back in the day. Yeah, do you ever come up here with like a lawn chair and an iced tea? Uh, if I had the time, I would. Uh, un unfortunately, those hours don't exist in my day just yet. Uh, but, you know, we are continuing to look at, you know, if we could re repurpose what we affectionately term the chapels up on the roof here. And so who knows, maybe one day you could have a penthouse apartment, you know, at the top there. Oh, that, that would be awesome. This would be the place to do it. Yep. Now we're in the basement or one of the basements of yes. the building. We are in the first basement level. And you've got one more thing to show us. Yes, right in here. So the building was a bank at one point, and um, there was several uh, large vaults. This one here is the largest. And as you can see, it is empty. It used to be filled with safe deposit boxes, and it was actually very pretty because they're copper and brass and gorgeous and small and huge. And um, this vault door weighs 55 tons and a funny story it was brought over here on a barge from the um, from the manufacturer the Mosler safe company they went to take it off and put it on a truck with a crane and the suspension of the truck collapsed so they had to wait until winter and they got two horse-drawn sleds and brought it over here by horse pulling it over here and they did it in the winter so it would glide and then when they got here they lowered it in from by a crane. Wow that's incredible I mean it is huge and now I guess it's it's stuck in place you have this it little have, no it's actually not stuck in place you just take this right here there's a gear under this floor and you push it and this floor lowers and the door shuts it's still operational. Oh, that is wild. Mm -hmm. So you sort of bring your friends over and freak them out by locking them, locking them inside? Exactly. No, <laughs> never done that. Never done that. There's Chris. You have some, a vision here for the future of this vault too, right? As we continue to fill up the building, and we've been very successful with that, um, I think we're a little over 90% full now. There are these spaces like this in the basement of the building that we're looking how can we creatively utilize this space. So we're looking at a number of things, whether it is uh, a tenant amenity space or if it's, uh, we looked at jazz, a, a basement jazz club, uh, those type of uses which this internal subterranean space would lend itself to. Um, we haven't quite figured that out yet. This building has served so many purposes, you know, over the years as a bank, it was a shopping mall essentially when it opened up. So when you're doing these renovations, have you discovered any weird things along the way? Um, well, you know, there, there's always the collection of, you know, 1913 whiskey bottles that you find inside of the, of the uh, webs of the I-beams. I but, uh, you know, we found interesting artifacts from the construction of the building. And this is what we affectionately call the mold room, where it's all the original molds um, used to create the terracotta pieces, both on the interior space 
of the atrium and the main lobbies, as well as the mansard roof. So when you look through, you can see uh, a lot of the box molds, the rubber is original, and then you can see some of the pieces here that uh, we have in storage ready in case uh, something does call for immediate repair. Once we did the initial restoration, uh, we haven't had to go back and repair anything else. So the building was really solidly built, uh, but after 100 years, it needed a little bit of you know, attention and love and care, right? Yeah, and there is, if you look up at the corners of each building up on the mansard roof, there's a huge eagle on each corner of the building, and that's made up of about five or six pieces here. Yeah, this is, is that a head of an eagle? That's the head of an eagle right there. So that's the, that's the, that's, uh, and then there's about five other pieces that make up the rest of the eagle. So, um, you know, there's all sorts of fun stuff down there. We're hoping we never need them, yeah. <laughs> uh, but if we do need them, we have them. Well, now if you want to add some eagle decorative elements to your house, you know where to get them all. That's right. You can come right down here and you can make yourself a little mini union trust building. Um, these are some of the pieces here that we cast new for the uh, for the mansard roof. So just to let you know. So we're you know we're we're able to take some of the old stuff. That's actually part of the part of the mold. Um, some of the old stuff and match some of the new stuff to it. So it was ex it, it was a lot more successful than we could have hoped yeah gosh well the building looks amazing chris thanks so much for the tour this was, that was a lot of fun wonderful you're welcome